Of all the sensory organs, the ear is the one that formed first in the human embryo. Before we see or taste, we already hear sounds in the womb. And because this is so natural and obvious to us, we rarely ask ourselves how we hear, what we hear and why we hear differently. Here are a few answers. The human ear can roughly perceive frequencies between 20 and 20,000 Hz and everything that falls into this audible range can be converted by air or water vibrations through the hearing organ. The sound waves hit the eardrum, causing it to vibrate, which sets the auditory ossicles in motion and brings the gelatinous liquid within the spiral-shaped cochlea into circulation. These vibrations within the cochlea set the tips of the hair cells in motion, comparable to aquatic plants in a river. Depending on the strength of the movement, the number and the location within the cochlea, these sensory cells generate different voltages, which are sent to the brain as electrical impulses and decoded into sounds there. This all happens in real time and so precisely that up to 20 signals per second are perceived as individual events before everything starts to blur. Like all senses, hearing is extremely adapted to evolution. Conversations between 2000 and 5000 Hz are perceived best. And it is precisely in this frequency range that unpleasant sounds are found, such as the squeaking of chalk on a board or coil wine from a power supply. That's because our ape descendants have warned other apes of danger by screeching and shrill screaming. Even if the pure decibel number of a coil wine in a power supply or graphics card is much lower than, for example, the noise of the fans, these sounds are filtered out in the amygdala, the emotional core area of the brain, and a defensive reaction is generated. The supposedly louder fans, on the other hand, are usually perceived as more pleasant by the natural analogy of wind and water. The hearing threshold is a technically decoupled value that is tailored to our physiology. At exactly 2000 Hz, extremely good listeners can perceive sounds in the single digit decibel range, whereas older people, city dwellers and excessive headphone users can only hear noise from higher dBA values. This leads to two points. We humans do not seem to mind sound pressure at high and low frequencies at all, as opposed to some animals, because in the extreme frequency ranges we can only register sounds from 60 decibels upwards. Accordingly, a hearing threshold has very different decibel numbers depending on the frequency range. In order to establish an everyday use here, it has been decreed on the unit dBA, which reflects a psychoacoustic impression of a sound event. Decibels and dBA are different things. Decibel is a technical value, dBA a value converted to the human ear. In everyday life, however, dBA is synonymous with decibels. And the second point has a highly social component. Listening is a very individual and social process. Psychological research, for example, uses words such as audiobiography, the sense of hearing, the preference for quiet PCs, the relaxation factor in a quiet environment, the sensitivity to quiet noises. All this is linked to a socialization of noise sources, which leads to a different sense of hearing. A Nepalese in the countryside, for example, not only has a lower hearing threshold than a resident resident of Berlin, he also has a different listening sensation. Even though the mechanics of hearing remain pretty much the same, the brain's interpretation is evidently different. And this leads to very different sensations in terms of sound insulation and noise pollution in the workplace. Some workers perceive impulse noise, such as a slamming door, as unpleasant, and in other cases a continuous noise, such as too loud fans, can increase stress and decrease well-being. Which is why a quiet PC should generally be the norm in larger offices. Particularly with high stress situations in the workplace, even quiet noises can be distracting and ruin concentration. And we must never forget, decibels add up. Noise sources emit sound waves. If waves meet waves, the wave increases. The sound pressure increases. So anyone who says that a quiet case or CPU fans do not help because 
because the graphics card is louder anyway is heavily mistaken. Every decibel reduction makes the PC quieter. Well, I hope I was able to explain some things worth knowing. In the coming days, as part of our No Noise Weeks, we will release more videos in the subject of volume, including a video with a prominent visit from Alexi Bexi. So if you don't want to miss anything, activate the bell in our channel and stay tuned. Uh, I mean, stay quiet.